Welcome back, this is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks and today we're going to take a look at the salesfunnels.com webpage here because everybody wanted to know how they did this little quiz kind of portion in the pop-up when you get on the page. So let me show you what it looks like first and then uh, we'll do a little dissection and then I'll show you how I rebuilt it myself. So what you do here is you come in, you click on this button, It's uh, the button opens the pop-up, so we're going to open up the pop-up, drops down from the top and then you have essentially four buttons we will call them here I built them as rows but think of them as buttons and as you click on each one you're going to see the border around it changes and also this icon here changes well one of the things you don't see happening is that there's a hidden section on this page let's just say it's down here so there's a hidden section on the page and there's a button down in that hidden section and as I click on each one of these buttons up here at the top it changes the destination URL on the submit button that's down here hiding on the page. So if we click on this one right here and we go then to continue to step two and then we go to access the free training, access the free training already has the submit link in it. So let me show you that. Let me inspect this element right here and we can come up and let me slide this over a little bit. Right here it says confirmation ecom. So we got our data on submit go to confirmation dash econ. But if we kill this out and I might have to reload the page in order to do this. And did it reload? Okay. So we reloaded. We'll come down now and we'll click on the second one and then we'll click on continue to step two. Then we will inspect this here and then we will see that it changed out now to confirmation dash expert from confirmation dash econ. So uh, ecom I should say. So. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, build a replica of this. It's not going to be exactly the same, uh, but it's going to be very similar. I try to use native functionalities built inside of ClickFunnels whenever possible, but in the case of the last button that we clicked, let me see if I can get back there. Now it brings me here, so let me do this. Uh, what I said is what it does is it's going to swap out these two sections. So it's going to hide this uh, section of content here. It's going to show the other one that you see come popping in. Now how I wish I could have built it was clicking this button here just did a hide show on the two different sections that I built. But because right now inside of ClickFunnels there's a weird animation that goes on Whereas the, um, the element that is showing shows on the page before the element that is hidden is hidden on the page. And because of that, we're going to have to do this with a little bit of code. Once they get that bug fixed, you should be able to do that part of it just by clicking on the button and doing a hide show and toggling them out. All right, so let me show you my version of this. In fact, let me see, what do I have open here? Okay, I have the whole page open uh, without hiding the section down here at the bottom. So if we, uh, let me just click on this and open it up. We're going to see here, I got the same thing here. On submit, go to, and here it says google.com because that's what this first one is connected to. If we click on this, it now changed it out to facebook.com and to yahoo.com and then to clickfunnels.com. And again, this button right here, when we click on that button, it will hide the top part here and show this bottom part down there. And then again, when we click on this button at the very bottom, it will submit the form save the contact information the first name last name and email address here and then we'll also in this case here take us to clickfunnels.com so let me show you how I built this so the first thing is we have to build it inside of the pop-up and so on the original page here there was a button on the page that opens the pop-up so all I built out of this is just a singular button here that is set to open the pop-up right there so once that's done Obviously, you got to build out your whole page and all that. Um, we're going to show the pop-up. Now, 
how I built mine looks a little bit different than Russell's. I built it a little bit bigger so it was easier to see here. So build it however you want, design it however you want, make it look like however you want, that's fine. But let me just show you the basics on this. So first off, we had an outer section and then an inner row. And then I used the functionality built into ClickFunnels whereas you can use a section instead of an element. So you just come in and you say, add an element. And in this case here, you choose one of these icons up here at the top. I chose a one column row because that's all I needed. And so that's what it does. I'm sorry, I chose a two column row. I forgot here, this is two column row. And so that's what we did. We got a two column row here. In the left hand row, this is just an icon element, just standard icon element. And it is set to the FAR, FA circle icon in there. In the right hand row, we just have a text element there. And the same thing here, we have a text element, except the only difference is on this text element, you can put an icon, or I chose to put an icon. Icon. With all text elements, you can put an icon before or after on those text elements. And this here is the shopping cart element. And again, we'll go back to the original and show you they had a shopping cart and like a person's head and a building and a gear. So, you know, again, we're trying to match what they did uh, just for illustrative purposes. You can build it however you would like. And then uh, with the row here, we put on some... Uh, some a, a light color here on the border. I just did 20% of black and then I put some corners on there as well. And that's pretty much all there is to building this out except that we do have to give uh, some custom attributes so that we can identify these elements using the code. So uh, this one here, let me see, did I have a custom attribute in that, in that uh, uh, section? And the answer is no, but in this row, we have a custom attribute of, oops, let me close that, open this up. We got a data title equals quiz row. Now we could have called this attribute anything we wanted to, but because a lot of people are still used to using 1.0, I stuck with calling it a using a the key on this here of data title, and then I just gave it quiz row because that's kind of what it is. And then let me see over here on this icon, we did the same thing. We got a custom attribute here of data title equals quiz icon, and otherwise that is it for it. In here and then down here on the button same thing we have our uh, data title of step one button one down here of course has a data title of step two button and then for the button itself I have it set to nothing happens uh, when it is clicked because we're going to in the code uh, we're going to say when that button is clicked to hide this part and show this part down here at the bottom so that's how that's going to work and otherwise again and style these however you would like. So in the lower section here, I was just playing around a little bit and just to make these side by side, again, I used the uh, section as an element feature, put in a two column row and put them side by each. And then I was like, oh, this isn't quite lining up. So again, you got to play around with what you got there to make it work. And let me see here. Um, so this one here on this lower section, I have data title equals step two for the lower section section, which means on the upper section here, I had the same thing. Um, data title equals step one. So we're going to hide step one, show step two. And you're also going to notice in here, I also put in some uh, some titles in here. These are just titles that you see internally that aren't actually part of the code. And that's where I was trying to do the hide show button, but again, found out that that animation hasn't been fixed yet. And so I had to scrap that and go to doing it with code. So that really should be it. I'll figure that out in a minute if it's not. So this is what we had to do. So now we're going to go and we're going to take a look at the code. And so I didn't put anything into the CSS. I just put the style for it down here because they were just only a little bit and I just wanted to keep it on the page as I was working. And so the first thing I did is I said, okay, what are the four possible uh, destinations that we can go to? And so I built an array up here. So it says constant or const uh, links equals, and then I have my four array items here. You want to put them in quotes and separate them by commas and put a square bracket around them. That signifies that it is an array. And then the first thing we want to do is we have to set the initial state. 
So as you saw, when we built out these buttons here, none of them had a circle with a dot in the middle, and none of them had a dark border on the outside. They all had a light border on the outside. Okay, but when you start off over here, this top one is if it had been clicked. And so I wanted to make sure we had that in here as well. So what I said is, so on this quiz row, remember I called this whole this whole uh, bunch here, quiz row, and, and I guess I didn't say this, I created one, had it all set up, and then I cloned it four times, and then you can go in and change out your text and your icons and all that as you wish. Uh, but on the code here then I say quiz row first, so we want to take the first of the quiz rows, and we want to add a class of row click, and I only probably could have called it something better than row click, but it was like the first thing I put into the code here, and that is down here, and all this does then is it makes makes that border color, turns that border color um, solid black instead of the 20% opacity of black is what it was originally. And then the next line here, we, we put in the dot. So we remove the circle itself and we put in the circle with the dot inside of it for the icon and then we also set the link. So as I said, down at the bottom where that button is, we had to set the, uh, the attribute of data on submit go to. We had to set that equal to uh, one of the links up here at the top as we go through it. In this case here, I set it to the first one. And because um, jQuery is zero-based indexing, links of zero means grab this first one right there. So then uh, next thing we do is we say, okay, well now we got that all set. Now when somebody comes in and we click on this, what do we want to happen? Well, of course, when we click on it, what do we want to happen is we want this one up here at the top to lose the border and lose the dot icon. And we want this one here to gain the dot icon and gain the 100% opacity on the border. And so that's exactly what we do here once we do that is, uh, well, first off, we set all of them back to the default default state. So we get rid of the dot and we get rid of the dark border and we set it back to the, the, uh, the basic, the starting point on it. And then the one that was clicked on, signified by the dollar sign this, says this, this is the one that was clicked on, this is one that triggered this function. We want to then put in the dot and uh, add that class, which then changes the uh, border opacity. So that goes in there. Then the very last thing we want to do is we want to figure out, okay, of these four, which one did we click on? So we go out, we want to look for the index of the one we clicked on. And we get, remember again, jQuery is zero base indexing. So it's zero, one, two, and three. So if again, we click on the very first one, that is zero. So this down here will return, will return zero because what we clicked on was the zero based index for this one. And then it says, go up here, find the zero base index, which is google.com and then again add that to the data on submit go to add that to it therefore we put that into the link when it submits it will save the contact data and then it will go to that URL that we have signified there and then right down here on the bottom we say that when we click that button underneath the first section we want to hide the first section show the second section so that we can put in our name our email address click the button submit the form and then and go to the next page. So I will show you mine in full action here as soon as I come in and we need to hide this lower section. So there we go. And again, you see here, none of them had the dark border, none of them had the circle dots or anything. We will save that. Go to a live page and click there. And now you see this one, the very first one that is set to the original. Now, if we click something else, what happens is all of them, how it works is it sets all of them back to the default and then highlights this one right there. When we click on this button, it will hide this top sec section and it will show the lower section, except all of a sudden it's not working. Let me uh, pause for a second. Okay, and as I was redoing the code, I just mixed it up. I 
name number one, number two, and number two, number one. And so I just kind of messed that up there. So now let's take a look at this. Oops, we have to get out of here and reload the page because I ended up on the second one. So did it reload? Let's find out. Yep, it did. And so again, we come to our e-com funnel right here, let's say, and we will click to sign up and then we will put in our contact information. We will click here, it will tell you that it's all green and good to go, and we will end up on our ClickFunnels, I'm sorry, our Facebook page, because number two here was Facebook. So that's an index of one, although it's number two on our list. And again, that was associated to the second one here, which is what I had clicked on. So that is it. That's how you can easily put this all together. It's really, it basically really comes down to you change out a little bit of CSS and you kind of hide and show some stuff. And the only tricky bit really is the grabbing of the, um, the array right here. I looked at how the guys from ClickFunnels did it. They did not do it. They used some if statements and I thought, well, I'm just going to use an array, drop in the four places I want it to go because I know that once I click on something, I can find its index. And as long as everything is correlated properly together, which in this case here, it's pretty simple to do, um, you can easily just do it that way. So if you got any questions, just let me know.